Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for this week's drawing, I will be drawing the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. One of the first drawings I ever posted on DeviantArt, um, which is where I post all my pictures, was of the Cheshire Cat. And I decided that I was going to continue to work on this Alice in Wonderland theme by working with the Mad Hatter. The concept behind this is that the Mad Hatter is actually the king of tea time. So I created everything based on that idea. My goal for this drawing in particular was to be able to do it all in Copic markers, excluding the white gel pen that I used and the occasional Prismacolor. The colorless blender which I used was actually um, Prismacolor brand because I don't have a Copic yet. But because I decided I wasn't going to use colored pencils in this drawing, I knew that I had to work really hard with blending just using my Copic markers. So this video focused a lot on blending colors. Starting with the Mad Hatter's outfit, um, I decided I wanted it to be purple, but I didn't want it to be like a very bright purple because I wanted the green to be very bright. So I wanted a nice contrast. So I used um, eggplant color Copic and I applied it all over, and then I shaded using mostly Prussian blue, but the occasional um, cool gray seven. And I blended those out by going back over with the um, eggplant colored marker. And then for the really fun part, I went in after I had finished the um, coat itself, and I used cool gray number one and went in and rubbed that all over the highlight points of his jacket. So where the tops of the wrinkles are, or um, over parts of the main part of the jacket itself, it also helped to give it a nice weathered texture, which I really liked. While I was shading his suit, I made sure that I added Prussian blue to all the points that are hidden under a lot of cloth, such as underneath his arm or at the neck of his suit jacket. This makes sure that it has a nice amount of depth and quite honestly it looks a little bit more realistic than it would without the extra shading. One of the elements that I was really excited about coloring in this drawing was actually the throne that the Mad Hatter is sitting on. While coloring gold in, I have a very specific way of doing it. This is where blending is very important. So to start off with, I add the highlight point. So I use um, a nice pale yellow. I forget which color it is, and um, I'll use that on the highlight points. I will then go in and use Lanette Gold over the um, main areas, so all the major points where it's partially in shadow but not really. And then I will use um, Walnut Brown in the dark points. And then I go through and reverse the process. So I blend out the Walnut Brown into the Lanette Gold using Lanette Gold, and then I will go over almost all of it with um, my pale yellow color in order to provide a nice transition and it looks smooth and almost shiny. I used a similar process on the um, cushion of the throne as well, um, except I made sure to make it a little bit more streaky because I wanted it to look almost like silk. So keeping it streaky meant that you could actually go in and create a very shiny effect. But you still have to go through and blend all the colors back together this will ensure that it still looks realistic. Also, don't forget to put shadows behind his back and where he's been sitting down and all the areas on the throne where light won't be hitting. If you have been watching many of my videos, you know that I usually don't like to do the background. The background's usually the last thing I do because I really don't look forward to doing it. This time, however, I really couldn't wait to do the background. In my mind, and in all my concept drawings, the background behind the Mad Hatter was really quirky and interesting and kind of mysterious, so I was really looking forward to doing it. Starting with the trees behind the Mad Hatter, I made sure that um, I used a stippling effect, which I actually used in my um, Lloyd Garmadon fan art, which I will link in the information cards above. And um, I used the stippling te technique that I used in that drawing and created the effect of leaves, once again making sure that I blended everything very well. I then went through and worked on the grass. So once again, always working from light to dark, I put down a base layer of my sea green um, for the grass. I put down this light base layer of green, that way 
I don't have to draw a whole bunch of grass in order for the effect to be realistic. I then put drop shadows both underneath the throne and underneath the grandfather clock, which is standing off to your left, and that kind of helped to create a nice depth and shading. Once again, don't forget to blend those out because blending is everything in this drawing. I then use my darker green, the same one that I used to make the drop shadows, to create blades of grass. I drew the grass in by creating clumps of grass. So if you look at grass, you oftentimes will see it more as clumps of grass than just a whole bunch of individual blades. So I kind of worked in little clumps to make sure that it looked realistic and it will make it a lot easier on you. I then added darker blades of grass to create dimension and depth using Prussian Blue once again. You will also see me come back to this area several times during the drawing. Coming back to a specific element will help prevent you from overworking it the first time so you can kind of see how the entire design will go together. It also helped prevent me from going insane because I kept thinking that everything looked a little too um, patterned and some, too much like a pattern so I went through and over time just kind of kept adding to it and it helped prevent it from looking too structured. The concept of going back and working over a certain area over time applies to more than just areas that you might get frustrated with. While working with a very complex piece, um, going back over time will also allow you to darken certain elements that you decide later on that need to be darkened or lighten other areas. This is also the time where you look and make sure that um, colors are properly balanced to create a nice balance in the design. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please comment down below, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can find a link to the finished version of this drawing in the description box below.